There is a magic in the Boundary Waters that doesn't seem real until you're actually here. It's not a boisterous magic grabbing you and forcing you to pay attention. There are no towering peaks or massive glaciers, but rather a quiet, delicate seduction that sneaks in under your nose and fully enraptures you before you know what's happened. It's beauty wrapped in subtlety, layer after layer of intoxicating wilderness, overwhelming your senses and drowning out the rest of the world with quiet and solitude. This is a land where one's only transportation is of his own hands and feet, and the only electricity to be found comes from within. Where you can paddle for hours before you run out of water, but with a bit of determination hop from lake to lake like a bee in a field of flowers. A land that will feed you for free if you only know where to look. I made three trips to the Boundary Waters as a teenager with my father and my Boy Scout troop. I'd spent my life in the mountains, chasing jagged peaks, so I wasn't sure what to expect from a trip through relatively flat land and giant lakes. But the unexpected divinity of this wilderness immediately captured my heart. I got the chance to return to the Boundary Waters this summer for the first time in 15 years and share this magical land with the love of my life. Since our backpacks and camera gear would be spending most of the trip in a canoe rather than on our backs, we packed a little heavier than usual, with a full camera kit and fresh food rather than freeze-dried. We awoke on the morning of our second day to absolutely perfect paddling conditions, and the longest portage of the entire trip. Okay, we've reached the end of Daniel's Lake. This is the biggest portage of the trip, Autumn and I are not super thrilled. We're taking a second here to uh, situate our bags, make sure everything's nicely balanced. This one's about 370 rods, which is, I don't know, like a mile and a third or something. Doesn't sound that crazy until you have, you know, like a 60, 70 pound canoe on your shoulders plus a backpack. Autumn's bag is probably honestly like 70 or 80 pounds. <sighs> Okay, we did it. We just completed that uh, portage. My watch says it was about a mile and a quarter. Uh, it was miserable. It's so heavy, so hot and humid in there. And the mosquitoes were swarming. When you have the canoe on your head, you can do literally nothing about it. So we both got devoured. We were smart enough to pack a single head net. Um, and we ditched some gear about halfway because that was a little much. So now we get to walk some of it again on a recovery mission. This was probably my favorite day of paddling from the whole trip, as we meandered along some very long but narrow lakes, perfectly situated on the border of the United States and Canada in absolutely dreamy weather conditions. A couple hours of paddling later, we arrived at our next campsite, an absolutely flawless spot with a perfect view over the lake and we happily spent the afternoon relaxing, swimming, and watching the world pass by. This campsite was so dang good, we decided to stay there for two nights. So we woke up early the next morning for a little day trip out to Johnson Falls. We were unsure if eight miles of paddling and six big portages would be worth the effort, but the two beautiful waterfalls and secluded swimming holes truly felt like a hidden Garden of Eden.
our last campsite was the true definition of seclusion on a rarely visited lake and we didn't see a single person for the final 36 hours of our trip. With perfect weather and hearts full, we made a campfire, watched the sunset, and let the magic of the Boundary Waters fully envelop us. For those willing to listen, the lakes are awash in a symphony of overlapping melodies. The whisper of the wind through the soft needles of the white pine, the gentle song of the waves lapping on the shore. With golden light painting the textured bark of cedars and glittering off evening waters, colors as beautiful as any paint laid down by the great masters. These forests were here before humankind left Africa, with individual trees older than the very country they grow in. Home to billions of living beings, these woods are an untouched sanctuary where life is allowed to exist and flourish unencumbered. This is some of the world's last true wilderness. A land whose value is not measured via resources to be extracted, but whose continued existence is the resource. A land with more value left whole and untouched than any product that could ever be sold. On the afternoon of our last full day in the Boundary Waters, as I sat in the shade of the largest white pine I've ever seen, a single cluster of needles fell into my lap. It seemed a parting gift, one last wave hello and goodbye from the wilderness itself, as if to say thanks for coming back, I hope to see you again.